welcome to Spy 25. Um, tonight's a night about borders. And the weird thing about borders is, is that they don't seem to behave. They seem to move all over the place. For instance, in the current situation in the Netherlands, every control of the police officer for your bike and lights or something like that can be a border patrol if you are an irregular migrant, if your papers are not in order. This signifies that we need to think differently about borders. We need to think differently about what constitutes borders and practices of inclusion and exclusion. And tonight is a night in which we will rethink borders and where they show up. What are the cultural political conditions under which practices of detention, deportation and letting drown can become normalized within the context of the EU and how should normative or critical perspectives on European policies and cultures of migration take account of the irregularization of migration and the ubiquity of new borders? Um, how does this actually work, the, 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 the complexification of borders that is going on uh, and, and how, yeah, how, how, how do we, if we want to be critical about the, these kinds of policies, how should we take that um, new situation into account? In the Dutch context, it is relatively recent that migrants, irregular migrants, whose status is unclear, have begun organizing themselves and have become not just the passive subjects of either persecution or humanitarian aid, but also speaking subjects and people capable of showing us, for whom lots of things are not border posts, how central borders are to our very existence, how central borders are in our society and how central borders are in our everyday practice. The elemental and elementary freedom of movement of the human species necessarily uh, implies a relation between the species and the space of the planet as a whole. Now from this point of view, territorially defined so-called national states and their borders remain enduringly problematic, irreducibly problematic. States are the problem. Um, this is sometimes called methodological nationalism. Um, that in a way that most often is not even acknowledged, um, the working assumption that underscores so much of the way that these topics are discussed and, and um, written about, but, but also the ways in which they're debated in public discourse, in political debate, um, has a kind of nationalism that inheres within it, a uh, an assumption of the naturalness, the givenness of uh, the notion of the nation as a kind of um, taken for granted. Um, migration studies itself, as well as migrant rights activism, frequently risks becoming a kind of unwitting accomplice to the, pr to the production of the spectacle, um, broadcasting in a very one-dimensional way what ultimately is the falsehood of border enforcement as a kind of perfect enactment of ever more seamless, hermetically sealed, exclusionary barriers. Um, so in our efforts to denounce the extremities and the severities of plainly cruel modes of exclusion, we risk forfeiting the critical responsibility to also detect how regulatory regimes produce regularities. Indeed, we risk failing to see that migrant irregularity or illegality is itself a very regular and predictable feature of the routine and systematic functioning of border and immigration enforcement regimes. Um, and thus we risk an unwitting complicity with the supreme monologue of the border spectacle itself, recapitulating its dominant theme of exclusion. We are not there to kill people, to let them die. We are there to send them back. And to send them back, we send them back, why? Because they are illegal. And they will insist about this illegality. Their discourse will be, yes, we know that they live in terrible conditions. But we cannot accept all the misery of the world. 
So they will refuse the idea of cosmopolitanism. They will say, we live in a world of states. Solidarity is inside states, too bad for the others. So what's going on? Well, it could be very stern policy. It could be detention. It could be quite aggressive. It could be deterrence. Or it's even a form of conservative compassionism. It's terrible for them. It's terrible for them. We will do our best in our detention center that they are not too badly treated. But nevertheless, sufficiently that if they are sent back, they don't want to come back. You are global citizen. Millions of people have not that, this chance. They are blocked where they don't want to live, where they cannot live. But the system of databases is organized in a way where, in the name of their own protection, they have not to come here. And I think that we need the three images if we want to understand what is at stake. Thank you. In each of the te two texts of interest here, the crossing by Hafid Bouaz and Les Clandestins by Yusuf Amina Alalemi, the narrator interrupts his own narrative with this self-referential act. The narrator creates a certain complicity between the readers and himself. By saying we, he draws us into sharing his powerlessness before the fate of those shipwrecked near Gibraltar. And so the despair of the narrator in Le Clandestin becomes ours also. And yet it would be very appealing to leave this story the way one leaves film, saddened, but with the consolation that if you felt like it, we could have stopped the picture just by hitting a button. But that's the thing, you don't cheat with a book, the narrator says. In this story, the death of the victims is as irrevocable as it is real. The characters are not going to drown in the words, but in reality. Le Clandestin, and in this respect the text is comparable to The Crossing by Buatza, is therefore a novel about the impossibility of conveying in words the suffering of the Hergus or of evoking those human beings in that mater materiality they no longer possess. All immigrants are immigrants for, from somewhere else. And this somewhere else is also part of their lives. It is their history and as such, it becomes also part of the history of their new environment of Europe. So the borders uh, are everywhere. I think we have to take stock of uh, the meaning of uh, this uh, uh, statement. We have to politically interrogate uh, this uh, statement. If the statement uh, uh, is true, or at least uh, corresponds uh, to some important aspects uh, of uh, everyday life, uh, then uh, what about uh, such a concept uh, as the concept of citizenship, uh, which is, by definition, a bounded concept? Uh, I don't uh, want to say that we have to abandon the concept and the language of citizenship. I don't want to say that. But definitely I want to say that we have uh, to problematize the use uh, of uh, this concept and this language. We have uh, to be aware of uh, the deep instability that invests and reshapes the very concept of citizenship. I think that one lesson that uh, we can learn from past uh, experiences in Europe and elsewhere uh, is that uh, these struggles uh, become more effective uh, when they come out uh, of uh, the position of the excluded, when they come out uh, of a position in which the illegalized migrants uh, are uh, how can I say, cut off from uh, uh, the whole field of migration and from the whole field of uh, uh, society. To work against this cutting off 
of illegalized migrants from the field of migration and from the field of society is a very important political task if we want that these struggles are effective and especially if we want that these struggles are part and parcel of a struggle for a society in which there is more freedom and more equality. Thank you.